another edition of Dr. McGuire, and with me today is Dr. Ludwig Lowenstein. Dr. Lowenstein is the director and founder of Arlington Manor. Uh, he obtained his doctorate in psychology and education at London University and is one of Britain's most quoted authorities on psychology and education. He was made a fellow of the College of Preceptors and has also published books and over 360 articles on a variety of subjects, including those dealing with forensic matters. He was recently made president of the International Council of Psychologists. And your list of accomplishments, Dr. Lowenstein, is so long that it would take us the rest of the hour to do that. Uh, let me refer people to your web page, I think, that gives your distinguished list of credits. Um, and welcome. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. It's a pleasure to be with you. The reason I've written a great deal is because I'm very interested in the work and also because I've lived a very long time. I'm now 84 years old, soon be 85, but I'm still working full time. <clears throat> Incidentally, I've got a book coming out in the next uh, six months on the subject of families in turmoil, which covers the area of parental alienation in the most recent research carried out in that area. Uh, if there's any particular thing you want to t tackle or questions you have, please do put them to me. Well, the topic that's come up recently, as you're aware, the DSM uh, is coming out soon, and parental alienation syndrome will not be considered within the disorder spectrum from the DSM. There's a lot of controversy about that. What's your take on that not being included as a disorder within the psychology realm for the DSM? Like many individuals who are practitioners, academicians in the field of dealing with family problems, I'm very saddened by the fact that it wasn't included in DSM-5 and the, the 11 as well. But that is something that will change, I'm almost certain. There's been a considerable amount of work done by practitioners throughout the world, not just the United States or Canada or Britain, on the subject of parental alienation and its deleterious effects on children who have suffered considerably as a result, both in the present, but even more so in the future, in having been, been deprived, in many cases, of a loving father or mother, mostly fathers, because in fact mothers tend to have custody of the children. How long do you think it And that is that the implacable hostility which occurs in many uh, families following divorce and separation. Now, you've also stated that mediation never works, or rarely works. In fact, it's, it's been known at least 20% of families who break up uh, have a, a very poor prognosis for being cooperative as parents in bringing up their children. other parent. It has, has very damaging effects, um, not only on the alienated parent. How, how quickly does this manifest in the presence of a divorce, say, is this, uh, when you say the, the long-term effect, at what age is this when they're 18, when they're out of the construct of the divorce, when they're on their own? Is this a problem that portends poorly for adolescents, say, with regard to a behavior which can be Risky. I think it, it probably affects younger children and adolescents more than older children, but it could happen at any time. The uh, animosity between, between the custodial parent and the absent parent leads to children being brainwashed against a good parent, and this is always harmful, not only to the alienated parent, as I said, usually the father. But failing to keep them together in a relationship of some sort with the alienated parent, the target parent, that that's a violation of the child's rights.
I get a lot of emails from the United States and Canada and various other parts of the world who are asking me for my help. Obviously, it's more difficult to help people abroad, but the people in this country, I tend to help in several ways. First of all, um, they go off and telephone me, send me emails, and I try to give them advice about what they can do. If at all possible, and this is unfortunately not all, often the case, some form of mediation or some form of counseling can work. Emotional and uh, psychological abuse is well defined in law and psychology. Why is it that courts and perhaps therapists or mental health people who are involved in this don't step in more, hardly at all, to stop this alienation, which is clearly harmful to the children and the risks there too? Um, I often write letters to the alienating parent uh, for the alienated parent, usually the father, to try to get the mother to cooperate in looking at what is in the best interest of their children instead of uh, living on their hostility towards the absent parent. How do you stage the alienation? Mild, moderate, severe, extreme? They're often given in three categories. The severe ones are the most difficult ones to, to alter without involving courts because they are based on the uh, obsessive behavior of an alienator who, whatever you do, will continue to alienate children. And I've had a number of cases where I've carried out mediation on families, and the child eventually comes around, wants to have good contact with the absent parent, usually the father, and starts to show love and affection towards him in, in, in the therapeutic center. But as soon as that child returns to the obsessed alienator, a child will be lost again to the absent father and will continue to be, and, uh, and I hope that uh, as a result of speaking to me, people will have a better idea of what the process of alienation does, the harm it does to everyone concerned, uh, and, and that it, unfortunately, is worldwide and uh, everywhere and, uh, in every country of the world that I've had any contact with. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Dr. Ludwig Lowenstein from the UK. Doctor, thank you for being with us, and we appreciate your time. Dr. Lowenstein has a new book, which is being published shortly, regarding alienation and the effects that this may have on children, parents, how it impacts or is impacted by the courts, and its social aspects, such as we've addressed today. I want to thank Dr. Lowenstein for being with us here pleasure to have you, sir. And uh, if there are any questions or comments from anyone about items to be addressed perhaps in the future, or if you have any questions I can address to Dr. Lowenstein, please feel free to email me at uh, Dr. McGuire, that's Dr. McGuire at syndicatednews.net. Thank you all for being here, and I appreciate your time and listening. Hope this has been helpful. I know it has been for me. All right, this is Dr. Kevin McGuire, Elizabeth, Catherine, and Kyle. This is Dad. I love you with all my heart, and I miss you very, very much. Besos y abrazos. All right, we'll see everyone again on our next show. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Papa, I don't think I've said I love you near enough. The leader of the band is tired, and his eyes are grown, we know. His blood runs through my instrument, and the song is in my soul.